from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. In less than 24 hours, our wild ride of this campaign season will come to an end. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. The presidential race is what many people are talking about. But locally, Democrats and Republicans are not banking on Clinton and Trump to get their people to the polls. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker shows us how both parties in our area are preparing for Election Day. Essentially what this is is a get out the vote effort. We've got volunteers in the office making calls. Both Republicans and Democrats in the area are making that final push to rile up their camps and get them to the polls tomorrow. Hi, we have our so candidate many. teams and volunteers out on the doors uh, talking to voters, uh, talking about the importance of getting out the vote. We're going to have roughly 40 to 50 volunteers come in today. All of them will be getting a walkbook packet, and they will be going out into the community and knocking on local Republicans' doors, reminding them to vote. Just like on the national scene, both parties here know a huge voter turnout could impact some races that are very close. When we're talking about the statewide level, it's uh, obviously there's, there's many races that are, um, are pretty safe. Uh, but at the local level, especially here in the Valley, we have many races that are extremely close and very, very competitive. We're encouraged by what we're seeing. Um, I would say that we are cautiously optimistic. Uh, we're going to find out in about 24 hours. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. You now, if you need a ride to a polling place, reach out to your party leaders or campaign headquarters. They'll arrange a way for you to get out and vote. There's been a lot of talk this campaign season about the possibility of voter fraud and other pro problems at polling places. If you see anything suspicious on Election Day tomorrow, give us a call on our whistleblower hotline and we'll check into it. The number, 237-6576. You can call and leave your tip. In Moorhead, city officials want to make sure voters have accurate information about tomorrow's polling places. This after a misprint in today's Forum newspaper. We have a map on the city wards, precincts, and polling locations for you, along with detailed voting information. It's on our website at valleynewslive.com. And be sure to be watching Valley News Live for your election coverage tomorrow night. Myself, Andrea, and Chris Berg will be keeping you up to speed from here in the studio on the hottest races in the Valley. We'll have reporters with Democrats and Republican parties, not only locally, but also in Washington, D.C., at both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton watch parties. Our coverage begins at 5 o'clock on KVLY and at 5.30 on KX4. Every day with weather like this is a day closer to spring, right? I'm getting ahead of myself right. a little bit, Hutch, e e but it sure is nice out there. <laughs> Technically, you are correct, Andrea. <laughs> there is no arguing that statement at all, and we are enjoying beautiful uh, November weather to start the uh, month of November. Clouds this morning were with our south and eastern counties. Those are shifting down to the south and east. Temperatures remain quite nice. It's a little breezy out there from the northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. That wind will continue. Our temperature will slip into the 40s this evening. Overnight lows will be a little cooler than last night, expecting the 30s. We are expecting a little bit of a cool down, but still very nice for this time of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk about how much longer our maybe spring-like weather will last here in the valley. Okay, that's what we want to hear. Okay, Thank you, you very much. It's now been one week since 17-year-old Jeremy Jourdain vanished from a Halloween party in Bemidji. Today, 50 people continued the search in a case that has few clues. Jordan left a Halloween party at midnight and was last seen running past this church. Friends and family had believed he would have started making the 14-mile walk down the road to his home in Cass Lake, where he lived with his cousin. But an extensive search of the main route to Cass Lake has come up empty. Friends and family are now searching other possible routes around the area. Had he been drinking a lot? Is there a worry that he may have laid down somewhere and, you know? Um, that's it. I'm, I'm kind of thinking... Maybe he laid out somewhere and he's hurt or something. Several dozen workers from the reservation at Cass Lake joined in the search this afternoon. Jordan is described as 6 feet 4 inches tall, 165 pounds, and was last seen wearing a gray Nike sweater and blue jeans. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to contact Bemidji Police. A man is charged in Cass County Court after investigators say he admitted to shaking an infant. Reese Young is his name. He's charged with child abuse and of uh, oh, and or uh, aggravated assault. Authorities allege that Young grabbed a two-month-old by the ribs and shook him, causing a brain bleed and extreme pain. 
Officers were called to Essentia Health last Thursday to check for child abuse. Young told police, I'm sorry, multiple times, and also said, I didn't mean to. He was taken to Cass County Jail, but has since been released. It was a busy day at the Morton County Courthouse as 51 Dakota Access protesters were scheduled to appear in court. Protesters were charged with criminal trespass and engaging in a riot for their involvement in protest action, which occurred on October 22nd. The maximum sentence for both charges is 30 days in jail and a $1,500 fine. Protesters were assisted by volunteer attorneys from out of state with paperwork to request court-appointed attorneys. Protesters were consistently entering not guilty, please. We have been hearing for the better part of a year now each presidential candidate's position when it comes to border security. But that's down at the U.S.-Mexico border. So what about our northern border? Is it secure? And who or what is coming across from Canada? Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has our investigation. For years, this video has been the rallying cry for those wanting more secure borders. Right oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. Right. Our biggest fear that this could happen again. But we've been hyper focused down here, the US Mexico border. Oh, Thanks in part to Donald Trump. We are going to build the wall 100%, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Don't worry. But these are comments made in front of Congress in 2011 by a former leader of the Border Patrol. It's commonly accepted that the more significant threat comes from the U.S.-Canada border rather than the U.S.-Mexico border. Concerns over security prompted senators to ask for this, the state of America's border security. Some shocking findings of the report? We've spent more than $100 billion in the border still not keeping illegal drugs out. This report cites the 9-11 Commission report, namely that terrorists have already exploited the U.S. immigration system and Immigration and Customs Enforcement cannot find close to 1 million people who've entered the U.S. through visa waivers. We have 861 miles of border the wow. Grand Forks sector is responsible for. Here's what the Border Patrol calls the Grand Forks sector, covering North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. I asked him about Trump's comments and if we need a wall up north. You know, there's, there's not a, a reason to put a wall fence that um, heavy infrastructure. Chief Heitke says they actually see more drugs being funneled north across the border than out of Canada. And despite the empty country they patrol, there's not a mass flood of people looking to head south into the U.S. I mean, narcotics are always um, are always around, and they're always part of our of our job. But uh, the main focus is going to be, and the main priority is going to be terrorism, and and that to make sure that that one person doesn't get in that wants to do something very bad. Canada is no stranger to ISIS. They've dealt with gunfire erupting inside the Canadian Parliament and people arrested trying to leave the country to join the group. Add to that a failed $16 million project to screen Syrian refugees that, quote, did almost nothing to catch refugees who might be linked to criminal or terrorist groups. Male in black clothing, he's still firing rounds. About a year ago, a shooting rampage in California leaves 14 dead as those responsible pledge allegiance to ISIS on social media. It's called polls. There's dead people everywhere. They're shooting. In June, another Islamic State terror attack here at home as about 50 people are massacred at a Florida nightclub. And the fear is the next attack will be carried out by someone coming through here. Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Coming up tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, Bradford teams up with the Border Patrol as they ride along what's known as the Slash. Find out what those on the front lines of stopping terrorism think about the state of our border security. An unusual sighting for many people last night. Reports of a huge bright flash in the sky happening about 6 o'clock at night. That according to the American Meteor Society, there have been 67 reports of some saying they saw a huge flash, others saying that they saw a huge fireball with a long flaming tail. Reports came from as far as way as Canada to South Dakota. A local astronomy professor says that fireballs are meteors and are typical but not normally seen by dozens of people. It probably was a fireball. It was just an exceptional fireball. The descriptions I'm reading here are very typical of fireballs. Okay. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that this wasn't way brighter than any fireball they had seen before. I mean, this, the reports indicated it was a very bright... 
Cabanella adds it's important for people to report these sightings so they can be tracked. A lot of people saw it. Yeah, it was neat. Some local elementary students know what they'll be doing on Thursday. Later on Valley News Live at 6, details on how they plan to honor local veterans. A pleasant November evening across the valley. Temperatures still mild, although the wind is a little breezy out there. We did hit the 60s for many of our southern counties today. More pleasant weather to ensue. Details are coming up next. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live.